In this lesson, we're going to look at some different types of isomers. So this will be divided into part one and part two. To help you identify the different types of isomers, there is a flowchart available. It's posted in Canvas in the chapter list. You can download this and use this as a reference as you are studying. However, you will not have this available on the exam. It's very important to follow the questions in order to start at the top and work your way down. Some students will try to skip ahead because they think they know what it is and instead misidentify an isomer type. The actual isomer types, the words you will assign to a specific molecule, are given in blue. Again, it's very important to follow the questions in order. The first question we see is, do the compounds have the same molecular formula? If they do not have the same molecular formula, then they are not isomers and we're done. So we have to look at the chemical formula, so we start by adding hydrogens and counting our carbons and hydrogens and oxygen atoms. And so for the molecule on the top left, we see C3H8O. On the bottom left, we also see C3H8O. On the right side, we see our C3H8O again for the one molecule. But when we look at the molecule on the far right, we see that it has a formula of C3H6O. So the molecules on the right are not isomers because they have a different chemical formula. The molecules on the left are isomers because they have the same chemical formula. The first type of isomers we will look at are conformational isomers. These are molecules which are connected the same way but have a different orientation in space because the atoms can rotate around single bonds. And we'll look at a specific example of a molecule that should help, but the way I want you to think about this is your body. If I move my arms or legs or bend or twist, my body is still connected to the other parts in the same way. If I start from my hand, I have my hand, my elbow, my shoulder, my chest, my shoulder, my elbow, my hand. That doesn't change even if I put my arms straight up, straight down, one up, one down, any orientation, the connections between those parts remains exactly the same. And that's what conformational isomers are. They result from twisting and turning of a molecule, just like our body can have different conformations from twisting and turning. After we've established that a pair of molecules are isomers, the next question we get to is, are they the same molecule with a different arrangement due to the rotation around a single bond? We will see later that double bonds and triple bonds prohibit rotation within a molecule, but single bonds allow the free rotation of molecules with respect to one another. A couple of different ways we can show this are on the left. We show that the CH3 group on the far right is pointing down, and on the other molecule on the bottom, it's pointing up that there's a rotation. Let's look at the pair of molecules on the right. In this molecule on the left of that, we see our CH3 and our CH3 are aligned with each other. When we have a rotation, we see that now CH3 and CH3 are staggered from one another. So there's a rotation around that single bond, and there is always free rotation around any single bond in a molecule. If we can see that it's just as a result of that free rotation, it's called a conformational isomer. Next, we'll look at structural isomers. And the question we ask for structural isomers, which are also called constitutional isomers, is do the atoms have the same connectivity? So imagine if I detached my arm and attached it to my hip. My body is no longer in the same sequence of parts that it was in. There's a different connection between different parts of my body. The same thing is true for our molecules. When we look at the molecules at the bottom of the screen, we see that we have three carbon atoms. In the molecule on the left, the OH group is attached to carbon number three. In the molecule on the right, the OH group is attached to carbon number two. So there's a different connectivity between atoms. Still isomers because they have the same chemical formula, but the atoms are connected in a different way. 
If I trace along and put a finger on carbon 1 of both molecules, I see that those are the same. If I then go to carbon 2, I see something different. The molecule on the left is a CH2. The molecule on the right at carbon 2 has a CH and an OH attached. So there's something different about the connectivity between atoms.